really quick kind of what I'm looking at, and hopefully I'm not beating a dead horse with this. But um, so just to show, like, you guys can't see my screen. You don't need to see my screen for this, but basically during the COVID crash, um, right? So Bitcoin, uh, it capitulated on March 13th, 2020. And that was when you had your candle. The candle open was at 8,000 and it closed at uh, below 5,000. Uh, that was your capitulation. And uh, it was uh, on March 13th, 2020. Or I'm sorry, March 12th, 2020. And uh, if I go to the SPY chart, uh, SPY after that weekend, so that was a Friday. And I'll just mark it off real quick. So Bitcoin capitulated on that Friday. Uh, the market opened and pushed higher after that. Um, creating an intermediate high at, after March 13th at 26, 26.9 on SPY, and then uh, declined in the next week after that, or week or so, declined uh, 20% from that area. So the point is that Bitcoin had already capitulated and bottomed out, and SPY was not done bottoming out. SPY still had 20%. To, and for SPY, 20% is fucking unbelievable right it hadn't even really capitulated yet so my point is that if if you're looking at spy as the leader then spy if spy capitulates and you're like okay now bitcoin's going to capitulate further that doesn't necessarily happen right bitcoin well, I, capitulates I, I first yeah. yeah so I, and, so they are correlated why, but they don't why. have that leading dynamic that people assign to them like Bitcoin leads yeah. the... Yeah, I, no, no, I, I completely agree with you on that. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. But this is where I politely disagree. <laughs> okay, okay. In a way. And, and, the reason, <laughs> and, and the reason why I do that, because again, if I, I can probably create the same analogy. Let's, I don't know, for example, make a popular shit coin a la, I don't know, a la Litecoin. Well, probably Litecoin capitulated quicker than uh, Bitcoin. Because again, I think this is where thinner books, lesser players, it, it just, it, it's, I think it becomes, it's going to be, it becomes the path, the, the path to capitulate becomes less resistant so, versus, versus spy. I mean, holy shit, like how many players, how much capital is in that ETF? You know what I mean? Like this is like giga, giga, giga. Like I don't even know what's the market cap of spy. Yeah, right? no, that's, so, that's definitely a good point, spy. man. Um, so that is definitely a factor, right? The lower liquidity. Um, but, you know, I think if I could respectfully, respectfully say, I think the the one fundamental flaw in the way you're looking at the market, and it's the same way a lot of people, the same flawed premise a lot of people have is that they think that SPY leads the market in like the sense that like SPY is the cause of what happens. And, you know, I think... I think you've watched a few Greg Foss podcasts and he sort of talks about how, you know, the equities don't lead the market. It's the credit markets that, that lead. So you have, you know, you have your, your interest rates and interest rates are good. If they're going to tighten, then that's going to impact the credit markets and that's going to flow down to assets. Right. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to, if you want to have a bigger picture, you should really look out for the bond market. Because the bond market is usually historically, Smart and in the room. Yeah, yeah, it really and is. They are basically and pricing in future, future uh, growth and inflation expectations. Right? Yeah, I mean, bond guys are like guys who actually have to do technical analysis to make money, and it's constantly becoming like a, you know, a harder and harder business. So they have to be smarter and smarter to be profitable. Yeah. Plus, they, I mean, the bond market is way bigger than the equities market, like way bigger. Absolutely. And so, of it's crazy. It's ludicrous. Yeah. Yeah. And so when they, you know, when the equity markets move, I mean, there sometimes the equity markets are moving because the guys in the credit markets are hedging their multi-trillion-dollar positions with equity. Exactly. So I mean, people, people look at people look at uh, you know spy or Nasdaq and they think, all right, you know, see we're going up, we're going down. So there, there must be some guy out there in the world which is actually buying up or selling off. But it's like 
nobody seems to realize that there are guys out there and they're not only about you know making those uh, you know open delta trades but they don't consider that a lot of guys with big amount of money their, their first interest is to be had right yeah of course i think the, when, you, when you start to have those kind of positions that they, they are gonna find a way to edge themselves they're gonna move a lot of capital and it can really impact the price of an index or of an index right yeah so the, the like the spy bitcoin correlation is is one of those things that yeah it is correlated but also with the nuances we discussed but it's also one of those things where like you you kind of the mind sees a pattern that isn't there right it 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 is there but it isn't there right and 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 the way it isn't there is in the sense that if you tried to trade it you'd get fucked right <laughs> I mean, like yeah. you, you'll, you would realize very quickly and very painfully if you were trading that idea that it doesn't work, you know? It's kind of tricky because I think, as you said, the mind or you know, the brain, whatever, you see a pattern and you see that it is there, but the problem is that you are seeing it and it is real. The problem is that it is real, but you, you're lacking the, you know, the reasons, right? The underlying reason. And that's what, that's what can really fuck you back if you don't understand that. Yeah, I, I don't I think, think you... that's a very good point. We, all, we often seek for correlations. But I have one more question, if you guys don't mind, in regards to this topic. Would Bitcoin of capitulate... Okay. Would Bitcoin of capitulate much quicker than SPY if the crypto market didn't have 100x leverage as option? I mean, does, does that also play into the equation? Yeah, it does play into the equation, but it's not just the capitulation. So you're absolutely right. So it, I, a lot of the major moves have to do with the leverage in the market. But it's not like it's just the capitulation, right? You could look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin topped out earlier than SPY, right? And so yeah. it's not... Yeah, this time around. Yeah. It, so it's not just that, right? Like... Uh, there was selling big, big orders coming into the market on the sell side, reflecting the Black Swan event much sooner than than SPY, and put that top in on Bitcoin. Um, I mean, like, so just for reference, right? I got. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. No, it was kind of interesting this topic about Bitcoin. Actually, even this time around, it, it put top in before before spy or before the nasdaq right because it is kind of interesting because i got two vertical lines on my chart right and i put them one is at january 3rd 2021 the other one is january 2nd 2022 and if you look at bitcoin basically over the last year we have basically moved in a, in a range while in the same time period spy was still grinding up before kind of putting what could resemble a top not not sure yet it could resemble a top but even if it is that happened basically starting from december so again it, it is another instance where bitcoin kind of call slow down uh one year one year in advance right that, yeah. that adds validity to your theory about you know, Bitcoin, uh, you know, putting the tops in advance, you know, actually leading somehow, right? Yeah, that's a great point, man. Can you expand on that a little bit? Oh, well, I mean, the problem for me is that I'm just, it's not that I have, you know, I'm not an expert. Uh, I don't have a lot of knowledge in, you know, on chain analytics and whatnot. Uh, most of the times I'm just looking at big charts and I'm trying to, I guess, you know, what price is gonna, gonna go next. But if I put, if I put the two charts uh, together, one next to, to the other, um, and I look at Bitcoin on, let's say, the daily or the weekly time frame, and I overlap the, the, S, the S&P, you know, the observation I'm doing is that basically you, you take the, those two dates, right, the, the end of 2000, sorry, of 2021 at the beginning of 2022 
and you can see that basically the range is not changing. We are still trading in between the 29k level and roughly the 63 level, while in the same period, you know, you've seen the S&P going from it was what uh, I don't remember the figure, but the S&P was going higher. It was not trading in a range; it was still going higher. And now, finally, you see that the S&P kind of giving some signs of weakness. But, I mean, even if it gets confirmed, and if we are going to have some sort of a deeper retracement or a crash or whatever, it should still confirm that Bitcoin put in the high well in advance with respect to the S&P or the NASDAQ, right? And I think that's interesting because a lot of people say, yeah, you know, they are correlated, so you need to look at the S&P in order to grasp what Bitcoin is going to do next. And I think it's the other way around. You need to look at Bitcoin in order to grasp if the S&P are going to experience some sort of weakness in the future. Now, nobody knows if it's going to be like two months later, six months later, right? But again, it's still some, some sort of a measure you can use to grasp why the liquidity is moving and how uh, you know, big guys are moving around the funds that they have available, right? Yeah, man. I mean, just to kind of... Make sense for you. Yeah, yeah. Just to reiterate what we're talking about, like Bitcoin being more sensitive, right? So uh, you have the Fed... The Fed started threatening with interest rates back in November, the November FOMC meeting. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it was early November, I think November 3rd. Um, so it took SPY about two months after that to top out. It was still setting new highs in January, um, but it ultimately put a high in January. So it took SPY two months to integrate that information into the price chart. Bitcoin three days. Yeah. Bitcoin. So... SPY topped out two months after that FOMC meeting. Bitcoin really confirmed the top on November 21st. So it took Bitcoin a week. And it took SPY two months. Yeah. And so that's again, the thing. I think it's because, uh, I, I, I mean, that's another proof that that theory really, really is right? way. I totally agree with that. Uh, I'm sorry, I totally agree with you with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not my opinion, though. I mean, it, like, if you could just go back in the chart and see the the pattern. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, yeah. like, uh, you know, people, the idea that SPY leads Bitcoin is, like, it. it's one of those things where it's, like, mostly right, but the small amount of it that's wrong makes it really wrong, right? It's like a, if you have a glitch in, a, in your software, right, it can fuck the whole thing up. Yeah, um, it's like... Uh, some sort of a asymmetric risk, but in the opposite direction, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, if, you, if you get what I mean, right? Yeah, so I, and I think the big takeaway from it is that, like, wrong. so when Bitcoin, okay, so this is the big important, like, how do you integrate this into something that's useful and something that you can actually act on, right? Because information without being actionable is useless. So yeah. the idea is that, if, if what we're talking about is true, then when Bitcoin has its 50% corrections, right, uh, where you do want to be accumulating, then you'll be able to do that, to act on that, right? That plan you already had, right? Any, I mean, anybody would normally say, yeah, if Bitcoin declined 50%, I'd, I'd really uh, buy a lot more if, if they understand Bitcoin. But then what happens is like when that, when that, when that's happening, Bitcoin's already on its capitulation and spies um, still crashing, right? It might be crashing for like weeks and then people are seeing that and, and then they decide not to accumulate because of that. And that's when it can be really dangerous, right? It, so if you, if you understand this concept, then when the next market crash happens, you'll, you'll be better able to accumulate Bitcoin without like the fear of uh, associated with like the broader markets and all that. And it's one of those things where like people can say they'll they'll tell you to your face like yeah i i would buy the shit out of bitcoin if it declined 50 percent, and then it actually happens and they're still you know they're like oh well, it could decline another 50 yeah, well, you you know, know. percent. it is it is 
I think it's difficult because one thing is, you know, thinking something and trying to come up with a plan. The other thing is actually executing the plan because uh, people can say what they want, but when you see an asset class which is declining, let's say, 50% in one week, I mean, it, yeah. really, it really takes you some balls to actually go in and, and bid it. Right. Yeah, you Unless ha you have a strong, really strong conviction in the, in the long run. Well, you, exactly you have to have conviction. Exactly. It's actually the only way you can do that. Right. So that's that's an important reason you know, uh, yeah, yeah. to spend time educating yourself totally about, about Bitcoin. Because if like you, if I didn't have conviction, I, I could not. That's just it wouldn't be possible. So, you, you know, that, that's definitely something important. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't have it right, you, you can set out to build it. Right. And then you can. That'll help you out, I, th I think, uh, if you use it right. And it brings up another point is that um, it's really important to have a plan, especially for when things get crazy. So if kind of what I'm thinking about on the macro scale, right, if like these are really not macro highs we're looking at and the macro highs are, you know, well beyond uh, the expectations that exist in the market currently, then... Um, it's really helpful to have a plan laid out and written down on paper of what you'll do in that situation. It's that's extremely important um, because if that happens, if it, if the market does things that just exceed expectations to the upside, things will get very, very crazy, man. I mean, uh, and it'll be very hard to stick to a plan. Well, you can't stick to a plan that you don't have, right? Um, but that'll be, yeah, the, you'll have no, that'll be also be a time where like everybody's encouraging you to do the right thing. Right. So, or the wrong thing. So like, and the emo, it'll just be an a euphoric thing. And I think, um, you know, with all due respect, but I think that's the, that's, I guess the only point where I'm kind of diverging from, from your opinion. So far, I agree on all of that, but I'm kind of diverting there because I think, let's say, for example, if we if we have a global recession, I don't I don't think that Bitcoin will shine. Not yet. I still have this this thought in my mind. Like, yeah. I am of the same opinion because um, you know, again, getting back to to the logic I was applying before. Everyone wanted the big institutions to come in. They came in, they basically paid up the price. We had that massive bull run in 2021. Now, if we hit really a global recession, uh, one that is you know, due to last for maybe one, two, or three years, I don't think the same, same people are going to stay there and letting money into Bitcoin without getting back to something that, for better or worse, they consider kind of safer, if you want. So, I think yeah. this is a... So, really I'm just curious, what do you what do? You do? So, I, be, I had that same belief going into 2020, right? And that belief really uh, hindered me um, with not having the exposure that I would like in 2020. So, I'm just wondering, how, how do you integrate that? I mean... I had the same exact belief you had going into 2020. I thought, you know, man, like all the businesses are fucking closing. Uh, there's going to be a great recession. Uh, you know, it's the darkest thing I've ever lived through. It, it felt darker than 08. And so I had that same belief. I'm like, man, Bitcoin's price has got to go down. And it was in a downtrend. And you have all this macro stuff going on. That's not what happened, right? It had a massive rally. So I don't know how you, how do you integrate yeah, that? Yeah, you had a V-shaped recovery. In right, that would be. I just don't know. See how you don't get over that, right? Like that when I when I interpreted that information, it's like okay, well, that line of thinking doesn't work or didn't work in a dramatic fashion. Oh, well, the problem is that the same thing I, I told you, well, I don't remember if it was January in the week, but the problem is that you had that massive recovery 
all across the board, and you might, if you want, quote unquote, blame it on 